Amen. God's word is our strength. Hallelujah. So today I'm going to talk about, I'm going to title my message as God is my strength. How many of you can say that? God is my strength. Hallelujah. How many of you have experienced a season of weakness in your life? You know, it almost feels like we are going through such a time as, uh, as that right now. I'm talking about a time where no matter how much you try, it seems like things only get worse or things just seem to get deeper or more difficult uh, in your life. It's like you try to go forward, but it's like two steps forward, or is it one step forward, two steps back? Uh, you seem to be making a backward trend, even though you're trying to go forward. Or maybe uh, y you are going through a period in your life where the nights just seem too long, uh, with tears and, and darkness and, and sadness, and no matter what you try, it all seems to be like nothing is working. No ideas, no counseling, no nothing is working. What do you do? What do you do in these times of weakness? You know, if you read the Bible, even great men and women of God experience crisis or weakness in their life. We look at Paul, one of the greatest apostles in the Bible. The man saw Jesus face to face. You know, he was a persecutor of Christians. He, he wanted to work against Christianity. And he was uh, putting Christians in jail and persecuting them. And this Paul had an a, a experience with God, and he saw Jesus face to face. And once he sees Jesus face to face, his life is transformed. He becomes one of the greatest apostles. He, he brings the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, yet Paul faced weakness in his life. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 says, Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the 40 lashes, less one. Five times. He's been whipped 40 times in those days. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was drift at sea. No, this is Paul the Apostle. We are talking about one of the greatest, greatest minds of the early church. We are talking about one of the greatest gifted human beings of the early church. We see one of the, uh, one of the most uh, anointed people of the early church. And yet, he goes through all these difficulties in life and crisis in his life. In this world, you will have trouble. None of us are exempt from this. None of us can be uh, escaping from these kind of situations. In fact, in the very next chapter, he says, Paul says, you know, I have this thorn in my flesh. I have some kind of sickness or, or something. I have this thorn in my flesh, and it just never goes away. It's a persistent thorn, something that bothered him, something that was, was uh, curtailing his effectiveness in ministry. And Paul says, you know, it's a season of weakness. A season just never seems to go away, but it's a season of weakness. The Bible talks about David. How many of you know David? David is a mighty man of God. Whenever I think of David, I think of him as in his royal robe, sitting on his throne. Powerful man. Powerful even before he was a king. Because the Bible says that even when he was just an ordinary sheep herder, he, he, he defeated a, a bear. He defeated a lion. The man was was not just a little boy. He was strong. He was a go-getter. He can do great things for God. And when the entire army of Saul and the people of Israel were trembling before Goliath, the giant, it was David who stepped forward and he says, you know, what can you do to me? What can you do to the, to the, uh, to the, against the God of the, of the, uh, of the host of the people of Israel? So what can you do, giant? And he stood there and he overcame the giant. And, and you, you know the story. He brings the giant down and, and brings a great victory to the people of Israel against the Philistines. Powerful man, powerful man, a man of victory. You know, Saul, with all his manpower, Saul was jealous of David because the, the lady started to sing, you know, Saul has killed his uh, hundreds, David has killed his thousands. And, uh, and Saul got jealous of that. And he said, you know what? How come they attribute more people to David than me? And so, and so Saul, uh, from that time on, the king tries to kill David. And with all his manpower and all his efforts and all, 
spending his entire life to get rid of David, he could not do it because David had something with him. David had the presence of God. David had an anointing of God that was so powerful that, 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 that Saul just could not overcome it. But yet, yet, the Bible says David had a season of weakness. You know, we, we know the story about Bathsheba. We know that uh, David fell in, in that sin. But you know what? Even in warfare, even in battle, David had a season of weakness. Second Samuel chapter 21 says that David went out to battle just like he always went. He put on his armor. He went out and he would have victory after victory. And he, and he would defeat his enemies. But on that particular day, he went out to battle. And, and there was this uh, giant named Ishbi Benob. And, and David probably thought to himself, you know, I have God, I have, I have slain Goliath before, and this Ishbi guy is nothing for me. I can get rid of him. I can take care of him. And as he went closer to Ishbi, he realized that Ishbi was more powerful than he could handle. A moment of weakness for a great man of God, for a great man who was so powerful. And the Bible says there was a man named Abishai, one of the servants of David, who came forward and he, he destroyed the giant for David. And the people of Israel were so sh uh, shaken up by the entire episode that David almost got killed. Their king almost got killed. The man whom they looked up to. The man whom they saw as a man that said, you know, uh, uh, who could kill so many people in battle. That man almost got killed. Their champion almost got killed. And the people of Israel are so shaken, they said, you know, king, it's better that you never come back to battle again. You never come to fight again in the battle. You better stay home in the palace. It is better for, for you to have an image of power than to actually come here and die in the battlefield. I wonder what went through David's mind. A man who was so experienced, so powerful, who has gone through so many battles, has overcome so many crisis situations, to have come to a point in his life where he now needed a help of somebody younger because David was getting older. He, he just could not fight the battle anymore. A moment of weakness in his life. The experience shook David so much that he writes about it in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 5. He says, for the waves of death encompassed me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The cords of Sheol, Sheol just means the grave. You know, everybody's got to die one day. And he says, the cords of Sheol, uh, death itself entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. He, it's like, you know, people say that uh, as they are about to die, they say, like, it felt like my life flashed before me. <laughs> That's exactly what David is feeling. He says, the snares of death confronted me. I, I was there. I was almost finito. You know, I was, I was a goner. I was going to go. And uh, it was a difficult time. The waves, the waves of death encompassed me, he says. Talking about the waves of death, talking about problems coming like waves, I can think of another man. His name is Jonah. You know, if, if, Saul was a, uh, if Paul was a great apostle, and uh, David was a great, powerful king. Jonah was a, was a great, great, powerful prophet. You know, sometimes we don't give him a credit that is due him. Uh, Jonah was a great, powerful prophet. You know the story of Jonah? For those of you who don't know, Jonah was a prophet of God. God told him to go to Nineveh and preach the gospel and preach good news to them that if they repent, they will not f uh, face persecution and, uh, uh, from God or judgment from God. And uh, so, so uh, Jonah refuses to do that. He says, I will not go to uh, the city that you're asking me to go to. I, in fact, I'm going to take a ship and I'm going to go to Damascus. So he goes in the opposite direction from where God wants him to go. And then, and then uh, you know the story. The, the, the wind comes against the ship that he is sleeping in. And uh, the storm is heavy. And the people are trying, the sailors are trying hard to, to uh, save the ship, but they couldn't, and then they try to find out who is the cause for the storm, because there shouldn't have been a storm, but they almost knew that God was judging somebody, so uh, they, they cast lots, and they found out that it was Jonah, and uh, you know the story again, they throw Jonah into the water so that they will be saved, and uh, Jonah himself tells them to do that, and then what happens? The storm subsides, but poor Jonah 
He's going into the water. He's going into the water deeper and deeper and deeper. It's like his crisis is just beginning to start, you know? His crisis is just getting deeper and deeper and deeper and more and more and more. Nothing seems to work. He tries to swim for a while. He tries to hang on to something for a while, but nothing is working. He's swimming uh, deeper and deeper. And Jonah chapter 2, verse 2, he talks about his experience. He says, for you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. In verse 5, Jonah says, The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head. So here is Jonah, one of the greatest prophets, powerful prophet. You know, he, he actually brings the entire city of Nineveh to repentance through his preaching. A man mightily anointed by God and powerfully used by God. But here's a moment of crisis in his life, a moment of weakness in his life. When no matter all the scriptures he knew, all the stuff that he knew, all the knowledge he knew, nothing seemed to work. He was getting deeper and deeper and deeper into his crisis. Friends, we all will have situations like that. One is a king, one is a prophet, one is an apostle, but... We all will have situations where, you know, there's a moment of weakness in our life. But what did, what did these great men do? What did these wonderful people do? I want us to just uh, uh, go through that so it can be a blessing to us. Amen? Paul says, you know, Paul, the man who uh, um, had the thorn in his flesh, the pers persistent problem in his life, he, he says in 2 Corinthians 12, 8, he says, Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. So what does Paul do when, when he went through crisis, when he went through a moment of weakness? He turns to God and he pleads to God and he prays to God and says, God, I call out to your name. Please help me in this situation. Amen? And we look at David. David is actually still writing in 2 Samuel chapter 22. When he's talking about his, his, all his uh, troubles and then he says, in my distress, 2 Samuel uh, chapter 22, verse 7, in my distress, I called upon the Lord to my God. I called from his temple. He heard my voice and my cry came to his ears. I want you to understand what he's trying to say. He says, in my distress, in my difficult time, in my weakness, in my crisis, I called upon the Lord to my God. Somebody say, my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry came to his ears. He's talking about a God to whom he turned to in his moment of weakness. He writes again, you know, David knew how to, and how to react when crisis comes. In Psalm 18, verse 6, he says the same thing. In my distress, I called upon the Lord to my God again. I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ear. So all these guys knew one thing, that when you have crisis, when you have weakness, when you have trouble in your life, you need to turn to God your strength. Jonah tells about his story. Jonah, when in his distress, in Jonah chapter 2, verse 1, he says, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me out of the belly of Sheol, I cried, and you heard my voice. Jonah says, I almost died. I almost died. I mean, sinking deep into an ocean, uh, you want to die halfway. You, you won't even hit the bottom of the, of the sea floor, you know. And, 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 jo and Jonah is saying, I almost was there. I almost was at the belly of Sheol. I was almost at the mouth of the death. And then I cried out, and God, you heard my voice. Three different situations. One is a persistent thorn in the flesh. Two guys talking about waves coming upon their head. For David, it was waves of soldiers came. You know, he thought he dealt with one soldier, another one, another one, another one. Finally, the giant pinned him. And then in the case of Jonah, he, he thought he was doing uh, his own way. I don't want to do God's way. I'll do it my way. And then he ended up getting thrown in the ocean. 
And he thought, I can maybe swim, uh, swim the situation out, but he was getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And he, all he could see was the waves coming higher and higher, bringing him down even deeper. And each of these people, because they knew God as their strength, they called out to God in their distress. They called out to God in their distress. Friends, I want to I wanna just bring this message to you to, to help you understand that in this life, we will have trouble, but God is our strength. Hallelujah. There is nothing else. You can have the best insurance. You can have the best doctors. You can have the best everything. You can have the greatest job. You can have all the money saved up for your retirement. But in this life, God is our only strength. We face our problems to the power of God. We face our crises and our moment of weakness through the power of the Almighty Father. Hallelujah. We call out to Him in the moment of crisis. What would you do when crisis comes to your life? How would you respond when, when weakness comes to your life? Who do you turn to? David would say, Again, 2 Samuel 22, verse, 20, uh, verse 2, he says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, my refuge, my Savior. You have you save me from violence. Somebody say amen to that. Hallelujah. It's all my, my, my. You know, sometimes we as Christians, we know God only in our mind. We know that we are supposed to pray. We know that God will help us. We know that God will set us free. We know that, that we are supposed to depend on Him. We know all these things in our mind that we are supposed to trust on Him and not lean on our own understanding. We know all these things in our mind. But you know what? It takes a closer relation, a relationship with God to know that when crisis comes, God is my refuge. God is my rock. Look at how many times he says the word my. You know, my rock. Uh, my rock means when crisis comes and like a wave, I don't panic. I am, I, am, I am established in the rock of God. He says, you know, God is my fortress. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they shall not be moved or shaken. Hallelujah. They shall not be put to shame. Because God is my fortress. Somebody say, my fortress. He says, you know, God is my deliverer. When giants like Ishbi, Benob comes and pins me down and I have no way to turn, you know, God is my deliverer. Hallelujah. Maybe he will send an Abishai to come and save me, but it is God who is my deliverer. It is God who is my rock. It is God who is my refuge. It is God who is my shield. Oh, when the enemy shoots his arrows against me, it is God who becomes my shield. Somebody say amen man, and it is God who is my salvation. Not just from my earthly problems, when sin comes upon my life and it, it, it tries to uh, have power over me, it is God who is my salvation. It is God who saves me. In fact, the name Jesus means he saves. He saves his people from the sins. Hallelujah. Jesus is our Savior. You know, in the moment of crisis, when you're pinned down, is when you start to see God in an almighty, powerful way in your life. And you realize, whoa, God is the, my only hope. You know, I thought it's my husband. I thought it's my wife. I thought it's my kids. I thought it's my parents. I thought it's my pastor. I thought it's all these people. But, you know, men of this world may, may let us down, but Jesus never fails. He is my rock. Somebody say, my rock my fortress, my deliverer, my salvation. When weakness comes upon us, when, when crisis comes upon us, 
Say this word. Say, God, you are my rock. You are my fortress, my deliverer. I don't know when my problem will get solved. I don't know when my situation will change. I don't know when I'm going to go through this crisis. I don't know when I'm going to come out of the weakness. All I know is that I have a God who is my strength. I don't face the problems of the world like the way, the way the world faces. I face the problems of this world in the way that God would want me to face them. Hallelujah. Because he is my strength. I shall not be moved. If you ask Jonah, Jonah would say, you know, as he was sinking to the water, as his crisis came deeper and deeper, Jonah says this beautiful verse that I, I just love Jonah, the book of Jonah for just this one verse, this one verse, Jonah chapter 2 verse 8, he says, those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. He says, I mean, what is he saying? He's saying, as he's sinking into the water, he's saying, you know, those who pay attention to idols, those who seek after idols, those who go after things of this world, those who make an idol out of anything in this world forsake hope and steadfast love. But me, I, I believe in God. I put my trust in God. I put God as my strength, which means I will never lose hope. I will never lose the assurance of the steadfast love of God in my life, no matter what the circumstances. I could be sinking in the middle of the Pacific. I know God is my strength. Somebody say amen, hallelujah. And the very next verse, he says, salvation belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, friends. It is not just a verse that he quotes, but it's an experiential statement that he makes that salvation belongs to the Lord no matter where I am, no matter what my circumstances. It is God who saves me. God is my strength. God is my strength. You know, you may not have the greatest job, you may not have the greatest pension, you may not have the greatest boyfriend, you may not have the greatest husband or, or a greatest wife, you may not have any of these things that you look for in this world that the world promises to give you, but I will tell you one thing, if God be your strength, you will not be shaken no matter what. You know, what about Paul? Paul the Apostle. At least these two guys came out of their their situation, but Paul, you know, here he is, he's writing about great revelations that he's had with God, and God even shows him heaven, and, uh, and uh, then uh, he sees what is to come, you know, that is a great revelation to see what is to come, and, and uh, Paul nevertheless has this thorn that just doesn't go away, and uh, his life was difficult, his life was very difficult, you know, he had no salary. He did not have a, a, a group of people like you, like a, a, being a pastor in a church where people take care of him. He didn't have that. He had to go from place to place to place. Always trusting God, always depending on God, always restarting his ministry. And, and 2 Corinthians 4, 8, Paul says, We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Hallelujah. You know, his situation was dangerous. He was struck down, but he was never destroyed because God was his strength. He was hard-pressed on every side, yet he was not crushed because God was his strength. He was perplexed, but never was a disappointing word coming out of his mouth. You know why? Because God was his strength. Friends, today you and I, when we have God as our strength, you can have an entire Roman Empire come against us. You can have the religious populace come against us. But guess what? Nothing will shake you because God is my strength. He says, 2 Corinthians 12, 10, For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with my weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You know who can say that? There's only one group of people who can say, in my weakness, I am strong. It is people who have experienced the power of God in their life. It is people who have seen God come through in their life. It is people who know God to be their strength. People who can say, he's my rock. 
He is my fortress. He is my deliverer. He is my salvation. He is my stronghold. He is my shield. He is my savior. He will protect me from all violence. This morning, somebody say, God is my strength. Come on now, God is my strength. Hallelujah. Nothing can move me. No, no army can come against me that I cannot overcome. No giant can stand before me that I cannot defeat. No sickness can come upon me that can take away the, the, the hope that I have within me because God is my strength. We don't live a religion. We live a relationship because my relationship says he is mine. Hallelujah. 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 You know, when I look at my wife, I say, she's my wife. You know, when I look at my kids, I say, these are my kids. When I look at my God, I say, he is my God. He is my strength. He is my rock. He is my relationship. Hallelujah. You and I are not defeated. Look at your neighbor and say, you're not defeated. You have the God of David. You have the God of Jonah. Oh, God prepared a fish for Jonah. Amen. I, I just wonder, you know, when you and I, when we talk, talk about preparing a fish, it means you, you take the fish and you cut it into pieces and you prepare it. You put it in the oven, you prepare it. But the Bible says God prepared a fish. I wonder how he prepared a fish for Jonah. Did he come out of nothing? <laughs> but God prepared a fish. Maybe out of nothing, God can bring you an Abishai. Out of nothing, God can bring a hope in your life. Out of nothing, God can bring you some kind of a, a benefit, a favor from somebody. God can bring all those things because God is my strength. I remember, I'll tell you the story and, uh, and with that I'll finish. I, I was in university in, in, in the U.S. and... Um, I didn't have money to pay for my tuition. It was expensive, you know? And uh, I came to a point when, when I almost, almost did not have uh, money to pay for my uh, fees. And uh, if I don't pay the fees, uh, the, the principal of the, of, of the university said, you know, uh, I think he was a registrar. He said, uh, David, if you don't come up with this money in the next few days, sorry, but I have to cancel your visa. I said, but I have, I have studied almost so much. I've done so much education. If, if I just miss this last one year, I'll be finished. I would have wasted all this money. I would have wasted my time. And uh, this would be a great disappointment for me. He said, you know what? I, I just cannot help you. Suddenly, I felt God put in my heart, no man shall disappoint you. So I looked at him and said, no man shall disappoint me. He's like, what? <laughs> he had no idea what I was talking about. You see, because the way we fight is different from the way the world fights. Amen. Hallelujah. The way we think is different from the way the world thinks. So I said to him, you know, no man shall disappoint me. He said, well, if you can come up with our money, if you can solve the situation, you can come back. I tell you, God, out of, out of, God brought this man out of nowhere. And uh, he gave me admission into his university. I had never seen him before. That was the very first time I saw him in my entire life. And I was able to finish my education. Hallelujah. <laughs> Actually, the next semester, I transferred back to the same university, to the same man who said uh, that I cannot uh, study in his university. And I said, no man shall disappoint me. And he said, wow, I don't know how you pulled it off. But, but here you are. I extend your visa to finish your education. I finish my education. And even to this day, even to this day, that education is a benefit to me. Amen? All that to say, start living. Start living by holding on to God. Don't just know him as, as a God that the pastor talks about. Don't just know him as a God that that we sing about, know God personally. Personally, that when crisis comes, you can turn to him and he will deliver you. He will set you free. I'm going to ask the worship team to come and uh, lead us in worship. And 